Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 9, Episode 6. This is another really good episode with a lot of variety. So let's get started. And please consider leaving me a thumbs up and subscribe because that would be terrific as we go forward. Now let's look at our participants. There are nine of them. They did a self-portrait in order to be accepted onto the program. I really like the color blocking behind that. That's a really beautiful image. Wow. All right, so that's number one. I don't, I don't know if we've seen that exact device used before. It's clever. The next one coming up, I just think this is kind of a smart way of dealing with the form that you're working in. I've done this before myself, not on a self-portrait, but where um, I've done it with birds before, where they have to uh, pull their heads down so they stay in the frame. I, I find it has a little bit of a humorous connotation to it. And you don't see it that frequently. So it's, it's, it's fun. It's a fun idea. Here's the next one up. This is unclear to me. I can't tell what's happening on the right of her head. It looks like there's some sort of fur and maybe a, like a fur throw or something with a head on it. That's just a little strange to me. And I always want to have images resolved in my head. And so for myself, I decided that's, that's what it is. But look at it, the intensity of the color. I really enjoy that. So I'm looking forward to see what she does today. And she's working in a square. I do love a square for whatever reasons, I don't know. Here's the next one. This was interesting to me because he's got a wrench at the bottom of it. Not sure what that means. Very much in the gray tones. And, but, but there's a lot of color in those grays. And then he's created some space with the gray behind He's just, that's, that's intriguing to me. I'm curious to see more. This one I just enjoyed because uh, really the contrast of the red there, I just thought, oh, this could be exciting. Is he going to do something extremely neutral and detailed and then give us a, a flash of, of excitement and color? That's what I expected to see, but I don't know if that's what we're going to see today. Remember, they had lots of time to work on these self-portraits, and today they only have four hours. So they're they're gonna not do their best work today. That's very interesting. Um, you know, we see a lot of people who use mirror and reflection as a device, which makes sense because if you're gonna do a self-portrait of yourself, <laughs> you either have to use technology or a mirror or both. So that's, but, but it's slightly different than we've seen mirrors used before. Here again, mirror and camera being used in this case to create these multiple images. It certainly is accurate in terms of portraying her likeness, which she was able to demonstrate that she could do three separate times. I, I find that pretty intriguing. Let's see the next one up. The, that's, that's pretty complex, I have to say. Next one, very simple. Uh, and I like, uh, if you watch my channel, you know, you know I like simplicity in painting. In other words, give me all the information I need, but don't give me too much. Um, although I love all, all painting in general. And here's our last one. Oh, there's something really lyrical and beautiful about that, isn't there? The kind of the tilt of her head, that strong shadow, sunlight playing behind on the leaves. Woo, that's pretty. <laughs> Well, we'll see what she does today. Our first model up is Jim Carter, and Jim Carter is an actor, and you will recognize him right away. I've seen him in I don't know how many things when it comes to the BBC, and he usually plays a very upright fella, you know, dressed usually as the butler or a gentleman of some kind. Maybe I'm missing out on his villainous roles, but he's usually in, a, in the role of a really good, good guy. So four hours in, the artists turn their easels around and we get a chance to see what they've done and Jim will pick one to go home with him. That has nothing to do with the final judging, but everybody who gets picked for that, it's an honor. Well, look at that, wow, that's just absolutely beautiful. Now this was done by the woman who did those multiple images and had her cell phone in front of her. She is very good at creating an accurate likeness you can see he's looking directly at us. There's a little bit of a wry expression on his face. She's filled up the whole canvas. 
she she showed up and, and in four hours she got the job done. So she would be able to handle the final commission with no problem at all. Here we have a more detailed view of it. I can't find any fault with this at all. Such beautiful handling of these orange tones and then using the complementary color of blue to create her her um, grays. And that just intensifies like that one moment on his uh, left cheek. Yeah, there's a that's a... That's a smart painter who knows her way around the color wheel. So we pull back and it's a pretty good size too and has a good impact, which, which you would need to have on a gallery wall. So she looks like a, a very strong contender here. Let's see who the next one is. Next one up that uh, appears to be a, a sketch or maybe charcoal or some medium, but I, I, I don't believe that's done with a brush. It is monochromatic. It it oh, it's this is this is painful because it has some of his features, but something's a little off when it comes to the. Um, I think it's happening in the bottom part of the face, so it's not reading as uh, Jim Carter to me. But it's a beautiful, beautiful piece of work. I really there's lots of lost and found edges there. You can feel the energy of the artist's arm and even whole body in the work there. They're not working from the elbow down. They're all in. Oh, okay. Yeah, I do remember her, her self-portrait. So it, it looks like she's more of more comfortable in drawing than she is in, a, in applying color. At least that's what happened today. And you know, this is a nerve wracking situation. You only have four hours. You have cameras and lights around you and a crowd behind you. I, I think most people would stick to their comfort zone. Here's the, oh, it must be the fellow who used those, <laughs> those blocks of color, which I liked so much in the self-portrait, but I, I um, oh, it's kind of lacking here. Everything is very, very flat. Maybe he ran out of time, when it, but if you look at the face, squint in your eyes for a second, you can't find any places on that face that go in and, and come out. It's all kind of one color. Uh, uh, he must have run out of time. They're just, four hours is not a lot of time. We all tend to binge watch. Yeah, it was him. Okay, we all tend to binge watch these days, and it's so easy to watch four episodes of something, and and that's as little time as they have to do this. It's it's, uh, And I'm not saying they should have more time. You know, we all know what overworked paintings looks like. This this forces you to do the best job you can, and you'll you'll be judged on what you did. He's not going to be judged on what he left out. But I think it's pretty clear who the overall winner is of this particular group. So Jim Carter is going to pick one to take home. I think he's going to pick that first one that looks so much like him. Yeah, he does. And that just makes sense. It was the best of the bunch. Who wouldn't be thrilled to have uh, this woman paint any portrait because it looks like you and, and that's what you want in a, a portrait. It's a timeless thing. Next con uh, model up is Benjamin. Uh, Zephan, Zephaniah. Yeah, Zephaniah. Oh boy. I look these up phonetically and then I have to say them. And I practice and I practice and then something happens with the, uh, with the, I want to say with the camera on, but it's not. It's just a recording and, and uh, I, I, I mess it up every time. But anyway, he is a British poet. And there was a jacket, that little bit of red that you see on the side of the photograph there. Uh, he, he, it was a jacket of some kind, which I don't, I don't know what that meant for him. But as many of you might know, I look with, I do watch with the sound off. I don't want to hear what the judges have to say, and so that does mean I'm gonna, uh, you know, I don't know all the information that I should in doing these recaps. I understand, and I cop to that. Oh, it was done by the fellow with that very chromatic gray painting of himself with the wrench at the bottom. He's, oh, he's very, very good. My, this is a much more colorful in it, image than he had when it came to his self-portrait. So, um, so he, he, oh boy, I said so many times there. That was, all right, I'll work on that. Um, oh, I really enjoy the energy of those color spots of value going on there. Look at that. Wow. Wow. Now, when I squint my eyes a bit, some things get kind of jumbled and lost just slightly. It's right on the edge of not, not having a clear value pattern. But like I said, right on the edge, which is a dangerous place to be, but an exciting place to be. So it makes it pretty easy if you look at that painting we just saw and then look at this one. I think 
you can see there's a, a very big difference in, in the use of color to define forms when it comes to that one and then this one. This is someone who's matching what they see to the color on their palette, and the result is just less, less exciting. There's less brightness, there's less intense color, there's an overall dullness. It does, oh, oh, she's the one who had that beautiful self-portrait with herself, and it had that, you know, the flowers behind her with the sunlight. Ah, I'm disappointed. Okay, I'm disappointed, but only because she ran out. Oh, hello, look at this one. Oh, you know I love expressive portraits. I do. I love an expressive portrait that captures a moment. Look at the exciting use of brushwork. You can see where the brushes touch the canvas and pulled away. I find that a really exciting piece, but there's a problem. Yeah. Can you see what the problem is? Yeah. The problem is not that it's as small as it is, but not when you pull back, I don't understand that composition. I don't understand the competing figure at the bottom and the flower at the top. Figure, flower, figure, flower. Your, your eye just goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And it's, it's disquieting. And she's clearly a really, really good painter. I don't know why she decided on this composition. It just, it doesn't work and yet cropped, I think that's fantastic. And this is the one I would pick, but I would crop it. So, but that's, that's what I would do in my studio. Everybody can do whatever they wanna do. So let's see which one he picks. And I don't know which one he's gonna pick. Oh, he picks the very expressive one. Well, I actually kind of agree with him. I really liked it, but ooh, I do not like the composition. I just, yeah, I couldn't own it because that's going to bother me. I don't like things that bother me over time. All right, Ellie Simons is the next one. She is a British Paralympian, and she is a swimmer. Oh, boy, good for her. I am not a fan of swimming. Uh, I was a fan of swimming as a young person, but as an older person, more problematic. Now, four hours in, the artists turn their easels around and we get our first chance to see what she's going to see. And like I said, once again, she's going to pick one to go home. I don't know which one she's going to pick. Oh, look at this one. Oh, oh dear. Okay. Oh dear. That looks pretty weak to me. Um, we're, we're, we're not very far away from this image, but it is, it is very unfocused and unclear exactly what we're supposed to be looking at. I know it's a person in a chair. Oh, that's kind of a nice little detail. But everything, it's a little rough, you know? It's a little rough and unresolved overall. Um, boy, I'm really not sure what to say. Now, what this artist did do, though, which is extremely ambitious, is they tackled the face and the chair and, I mean, the whole body, which you really don't have time to do on this program, so it might have suffered from that. They have a likeness. There's just such a lack of color. Um, it's, it's, and, and again, suffers from a, a certain degree of flatness. There's a lot of outlining going on here. And if you squint your eyes, you can see blobs of color, but they kind of don't coalesce into forms. And I'm, I'm not sure I understand why. It must be that the, the overall value patterns just weren't, weren't there. Oh boy, this is a beautiful portrait of somebody. Uh, I don't think it's a portrait of Ellie. <laughs> it's Ellie-like, but I don't know that it looks... I would not say that this uh, resembles her. Now, that's not a problem on this uh, program for some reason. It looks a little bit more like her when you pull away. And I, and I, I think she... I really do like her, her use of color. Nothing is confusing here. She's got some, she's defined forms. Yeah, she's got a nice value range, lost and found edges, nice composition, everything's working for it. it just doesn't look like our model. Here's the last one. He was the one I was excited about because he had, his self-portrait had that sort of red hat on it. And so I thought he would do something exciting with color, but he really didn't. He just, did, yeah, he did something extremely monochromatic. I think it does resemble the sitter. I'm not so sure that it's flattering. And, you know, let's be honest here. Most people want to have a flattering image of themselves. They do. What I found in watching this program is that the people who are absolutely gorgeous, you know, the models and whatnot, they tend to pick an image where they're not 
necessarily flattered, but everybody else goes for a more flattering version of themselves, as I think almost all of us would. So I'm really not sure what to say about this one, and we don't know which one Ellie's going to pick. Um, I think she's going to pick that middle one because it's just, it's just a, I hate to use the word pretty, but it is. It's a prettier painting than the other ones and has more color overall. So we're about to see which one she picks. Let's see, Ellie, what are you going to pick to be in your home? Yeah, that one. That's going to be beautiful in her home. I'm not, I, it doesn't exactly nail her resemblance, but it's, it's Ellie-like. So what do they say? Ellie adjacent. We'll go with that. Judging begins. Now judging has all our participants lined up, standing there. It's been an incredibly long day. They had four hours to work. They had one hour in between for lunch where they could use their technical devices to help them. Oh, they can use technical devices all throughout, but at the lunchtime, your models aren't going to be there. Hot television lights. You can see some of the crowd milling around just beyond exhausting. And remember, you can't tell your family or anybody that you're doing this. It, it has to be done in secrecy. So this is such a nerve-wracking process, and I thank them for doing this for me so that we get to see the program. Here's our first one up. Um, okay, we've talked about this. This is underwhelming if we think about some other episodes and, and people who've gotten to the semifinals. This type of painting has been passed over over and over and over again. It just so happened in this particular program, in her group, this was the best of her group. I don't know. Oh, I really do like this one a lot. Again, he's the fellow who had the... Well, we're going to see in a moment. We're going to see their self-portraits next to what they did today. I do find the color of this extremely exciting. Yeah, yeah, that's the one I'm going to go with, but hashtag Joe is always wrong. Oh, but I want this one too. Oh, I think I want this one more. But that's just a visceral reaction. I always look at these as if they're paintings that I commissioned and which one would I purchase. And... It really is a different bar than which one do I like. Because when you have to put your real money down, you have to really love it because you're going to look at it every day for the rest of your life. So now we get into the final judging. And the final judging is when we get to see uh, the three semifinalists. There they are. They all worked in a pretty good size today. No one went too tiny. All quite similar, actually. I'm sure they practiced in order to do this. All very very accomplished. I like the one on the far left and I like the one on the far right the best. Which one would you pick? Yeah, which one would you pick? Whichever one it is. It won't be the one the judges pick. That one I promise, Tash. I promise you. This time, hashtag, you'll be wrong. No, it'll be me. So let's see. Here are the self-portraits and the, what he did today. Oh, boy, I think this guy's pretty, oh, he's really, really good. Because he's showing that he can he can work both with without with very minimal color and also with a great abundance of color, and he's willing to do that. He's also willing to use symbolism, and and explore space. Uh, I think he's an exciting painter. I, now I'm hoping he wins. Let's see the next one up. All right, the next. Oh boy, I am surprised that that was her self portrait. Well, so there is where time made a very very big difference for her today. Clearly. They'll, those look like two completely different pa people did these paintings. So she just she just suffered from not having the time needed to be able to kind of dial in and do what, do her style, do what she's accustomed to doing. But that's the parameters of the program. Now we go on to the last. Oh boy, oh boy. All right, I'm I have a real dilemma because I think both of these are really really terrific. And she shows a lot of the same strengths that uh, that our first semifinalist does. So I don't know what the judge is going to do. I think they should move both of them forward. I just, both should go forward. But we're going to see who the winner is. Dun, 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 dun. The winner is, oh, oh my gosh, I'm so surprised. I thought it was going to be the woman with the cell phone. I can't believe it. Wow. I'm not displeased because I wanted them to both to go forward. I guess I have to accept that I was going to be unhappy if they both didn't. And we've only had two people go forward ever that I know of in the history of the program. Oh, I do want to see more from him. But I will look into the other artists because I want to know more about them as well. So remember to keep the white to your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. 
please join my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.